First of all, uh, Matt, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, am I cor correct in saying that you moved here just recently or, or f for the upcoming? Yeah, you, you would be correct in saying that. I, I feel like I live here. I mean, it's, it's temporary. Okay. But, but uh, <laughs> yeah, w simple question, w why? I moved here for the, yeah, the, release, the release of my new album which is coming out at the, in the end of October. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's good to be, since we're releasing in Europe, I mean, right now, four countries, the Netherlands, Germany, Italy, and Belgium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if an opportunity arises or something to do, I don't have to fly across the Atlantic Ocean to right. do it. Right. And we had already scheduled, you know, I had shows in Germany in uh, that just happened in September, shows in the Netherlands in December, the release of the album in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it just made sense to be here. Now, did they, you've been here quite a lot uh, Yeah, I think previously? this is, this, I went, came over five times last mm -hmm. year. But now that you're, you're here, uh, for lack of a better word, for real, um, do you experience the, the country differently? I think I'm, I'm getting more familiar with with the yeah with the with the with the Netherlands I've got you know I've got a chip cart okay. now so I can travel <laughs> all around and yeah you know getting getting more situated with with how things work okay. and uh, well this this um, connection you have with the Netherlands obviously it's it's part part of it was was doing well with uh with the song on yeah. gts day yeah uh, tijden, slechte tijden. but is there a, is is that what the connection is or or is there more to it for you i mean that was the start of it mm -hmm. yeah but you know being over here so much last year you really you know fell in love with the country i think it's such a f you know as an american we don't have as rich of a culture as you guys do over here. You know, the, all the history and all the things that are traditionally Dutch. You know, it, it's fun to, to discover that. Well, before we talk about the album, I'd like to go to the beginning first. Sure. Um, do you remember the first record you bought with your own money? Mm. Let me think. Yeah, I think it was Rubber Soul by the Beatles. Okay. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. I, I, I was into the Beatles from a very young age. What yeah. got you into the Beatles? I think it was my dad. He used to have them on, uh, you know, have them on in the house. Mm -hmm. And I, that was the way I actually learned. I don't play much guitar anymore, but I used to play a lot of guitar, and I learned how to play all the Beatles, the, like the Beatles anthology on on guitar and but there were a couple of songs in there that were on rubber soul that i didn't have the recording so like that, that's when i went out and bought okay. that record and 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 in terms of of liking the beatles why the beatles what what interested you in them i mean i think at the time i was pretty young i think i just really thought they wrote good songs mm -hmm. i didn't really realize that they actually changed music mm -hmm you know, forever and, and are such a huge influence on so many different musicians. I don't think I grasped that at the time. Yeah, I just really, you know, I dug the, uh, the whole spectrum of what they did, starting with the early things and then, you know, into the more psychedelic, crazy stuff. And, and what age was this that, that you started? I started when I was about 11 or 12 years old. And then you mentioned the guitar. Was the guitar the first instrument that you ever tried to well, play? Well, I know actually I, I did study piano mm -hmm. first. Okay, okay. And then I quit piano and took up the guitar. And then I took up the saxophone. Mm -hmm. And I got back into the piano in high school. I was probably 16 or 17. What, what made you go back? I think what made me go back to piano was, you know, I started taking a lot more music theory classes, mm -hmm. really getting to know, you know, that side of it. And when you look at a piano, it's all, it's all laid out for you, you know, learning about 
you know, just the structure of how music works. A piano is it, this, it all, it all makes sense on a piano, you know, on a guitar, on a saxophone, on these other instruments. It, it's not as easily just laid out right in front of you. Mm -hmm. So I started, you know, once started learning more music theory, started sitting down at the piano again and figuring things out that way. And then uh, how old were you at this point? I'm 17. Okay, and were you writing your own songs uh, by then? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was writing my own songs since I was about 12. Okay, okay. And, you know, you write, keep writing, you know, not, they weren't good songs, mm. but they were mine. <laughs> What did you get? Out, what compelled you to to start writing? Yeah, having lots of feelings, needing to get them out. <laughs> well, the, know, the, to being twelve years old is a confusing time. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I think it was more of a hobby. You know, it was never. I didn't really. I didn't realize that that's what I wanted to do f for my life until that, that really happened in college. But because I was, I was studying jazz saxophone mm. in college and I was also writing songs on the side. And you know, I, one day a, fl flip, a switch flipped and I said, you know what, this is what I want to do. I want to be a singer-songwriter. Do, do you know what made that, that switch flip? Why it flipped at that point? It, it could be a combination of uh, seeing how difficult it is to, mm. you know, make a living in, in jazz and and also realize you know realizing what my actual what my passion really was and it was songwriting you know I've, 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 trying to sit really sit down and have a hard you know a hard look at what what real what makes me happy mm -hmm. you know when am i feeling the best and it turned out it was wasn't playing jazz it was singer songwriting in terms of uh, songwriting, was there one thing that you maybe took with you from, from studying jazz? I think I, there's a lot of things I took with me. You know. Maybe the one, one thing that sticks out for you that you still use? I think, it, you know, work ethic. Okay. Jazz is not a music that you can just pick up. Mm -hmm. You know, it really requires a lot of hard work. And I think all music requires hard work, but, uh, you know, classical and jazz specifically you can't just sit down and you can't teach yourself, right. <laughs> you know, you really need at least to yeah, listen to records constantly and transcribe and, you know, learn all of this standard repertoire and all, you know, all of that sort of. Was it then the same approach when you started writing more pop ori orientated music? Yeah, you know, I, it, definitely, I, you know, I took that sort of the same approach that I did when I was learning jazz, like to learn all the songs that I could, learn the, you know, most of the Motown repertoire, okay. learn, you know, tons of, tons of Beatles songs, learn, you know, Stevie Wonder and play, you know, playing, start playing covers around New York City, you know, and then from then that really informed my own songwriting. From uh, studying all these, these great musicians, was there maybe a commonality you, you discovered in all of them? You mean between the jazz between the and Beatles, the pop? Between the Beatles, between Stevie Wonder and, and, and also jazz and classical music. Is there a commonality you, you maybe discovered in hindsight? I, I mean, I, I think, you know, there everybody's, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know, you listen, yeah, hear about, hear stories about these old musicians and what, you know, they were going through and how, how it is that they found their way. But I would say, yeah, I would, I mean, I'd say the commonality is just the passion for it, you know, to really give everything to, you know, the music. Well, because I, I think m the music industry isn't a very easy play, a place to make a living, a very easy business to go into. So what was that kind of a worry when you already mentioned the way jazz and, and classical music are, are viewed? And, and right. Yeah, that's that's true. It's not like it's easier to make it in, in pop music, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think that you know, you ask yourself a you ask yourself a tough question when you decide to become a musician. You need to ask yourself: Is you know, is there anything else that you could be doing? Was there anything else that I could do? Is there anything else that I wanted to do? And if there is, you should go do it. Because 
with music, it really has to be your everything. It has to be the reason that you wake up in the morning. You need to prioritize it. You know, unfortunately, sometimes you prioritize it above relationships and, you know, life uh, events in your life, you know, people getting married, mm -hmm. friends, you know, birthday parties, things like that. If, if you don't have that sort of passion to it, then it, it's going to be a lot more difficult. But is that difficult to do? Because, as you say, being on tour, you, you do miss quite a lot. Is, yeah. is that difficult? It's, it, it is difficult, but it's not at the same time because there's no choice. There's okay. not really a choice in right, it. Right. You, you know, something comes up, some opportunity comes up, you have to take it. Mm -hmm. 